Good morning, Year 6. I hope you're well and you're keeping yourself safe and you had a fantastic weekend, well rested and you're ready for your learning today. So, today we're going to be looking at converting metric measures involving volume. So I'd like you to write the date, numerical date, and then write the date in Roman numerals and then write the... Oh my days. I've done it again. It must have been too good a weekend. I've made a mistake. Can you spot the spelling mistake on screen? Yeah. Silly me. I've written measures wrong. I've written it M-E-S-H-U-R-E-S. -E -E now, although that sounds right, something tells me that isn't quite right. So, let's see if you can correct the spelling. That's right. It should be M-E-A-S-U-R-E-S. -E -E Excellent. Well done if you got that correct. Now, without further ado, let's get started. Write down your date and your learning intention and we'll begin. So we've got a lot to cover today, but before we can go on to today's lesson, there's a few things you need to know to make sure that you'll be 100% successful with today's lesson. You need to be able to multiply and divide by 10, 100 and 1000 with ease. You need to be able to convert metric units involving mass, which we did last week, as well as converting metric units involving length which we also did last week. So if you haven't done last week's lessons, I suggest you do those first before going on to today's lessons. If you need a bit more help with multiplying and dividing by 10, 100 or 1000, then Khan Academy is great. So you can just go to Khan Academy and type in multiplying, multiplying and dividing by 10, 100 and 1000. Or if, if you prefer, you can have a go at trying to copy down the link on screen. But I think it'd be easier to just go to Khan Academy and type in the title that I've shown you. So for today's lesson, you will need a pencil, paper, five minute timer, and you'll need the worksheet which has been emailed to you all this morning, should have all received the email, but if you didn't, don't worry. You can also find the worksheet on the Grange Primary website. If you go to online learning, the tabs on the right hand side, if you click on year six, week three, Monday and you'll also find this worksheet or you could just email us at the email address which will be shown at the end of the video and we can send it to you but everyone should have got it in an email I've got most of your emails now most and lastly we need to have an attitude that tells us we're an, a positive attitude ready to learn Hmm, why is Miss Bartley showing us hats, you wonder? Well, you will remember in class, we have talked before about the hats that we wear when we're doing our maths work. And in fact, this can even apply to other subjects as well. We wear a method hat and a logic hat. And we need both of those hats when we're doing any type of work, any type of work specifically in maths. So, your method hat is where you use, you might use written methods or you might have a written method in your mind, but you're trying to work it out in a systematic way. Whereas your logic hat is where you take a step back and say, does this answer make sense? So say, for example, I was trying to work out 72 minus 56 and I done all my calculations. And then the answer that I'd come out with was 85. Now, I use my method hat, fine, but then I need to use my logic hat, look at my answer and say, is this a logical answer? I started with 72, I took away 56 and I ended up with 85, which is more than I started with. So logically, this cannot be the right answer. So make sure you've always got both those hats on. Yes, do your calculations and work out your answers, but then take a step back, look at your answers and think, mm, does that make sense? You know, if the answer is supposed to be 10 times something, is that logical? What you've written, is that logical? Does that sound about right? So make sure you're always wearing both of those hats throughout each of your lessons. So for our mental maths, we're going to go through, we're going to have a go at working out the answers, and then we'll go through the answers together. And well done to those children who sent work in last week where they'd set themselves almost like a beat the timer challenge 
So although they'd set themselves five minutes, they completed it in, say, four minutes 30. And then the next day, they tried their best to beat that time. So it was really, really nice. So that's one idea. It's a really good idea. Personal best. What's your personal best? So pause the video here. This is where your five minute time will come in handy and we'll go through the answers shortly. Super. So write 2,390,004 in words. So that should have been written like this. Well done if you managed to get that correct. For the next one, Use column subtraction to solve this calculation. And we've got 1,094,543 minus 319,687. So you had to make sure that when you're writing this in the column method, you had your numbers in the right columns. So it's always best to start with writing the numbers from the, from the right hand side to make sure you've lined them up correctly. And the answer should have been 774,856. Now, going on to fractions, what number is hidden in these equivalent fractions? Remember, equivalent means that they are the same. So three quarters is equal to how many twentieths? In order to solve this, we needed to work out what, what, how, how many times we multiply four to get to 20. So four times five equals 20. Or you could have done it as 20 divided by four, which equals five. Now we know that we're timesing by five. Whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. So 4 times 5 is 20, and 3 times 5 is 15. So the answer there was 15 twentieths. Well done if you got those correct so far. Problem solving. Write a subtraction calculation to match this bar model. Now we know with the bar model, the number shown on top is the total. It's the total value. So when we put all the numbers below together, we should get that number. If we've got 1,095 on top, we need to subtract 382 to find out what the missing number is. Some of you might have been able to do that mentally by doing 95 take away 82, which gives you 13, and then subtracting 300 from there. So once you've got 1,013, then subtracting 300. So 913, 813, 713. So well done if you managed to get the answer correct. If you had to use a written method, then that is fine too. Reasoning. So Ahmed says, five miles is eight kilometers. So 20 miles is 30 kilometers. Hmm. Is Ahmed correct? Explain your reasoning. Well, let's look at what we have to do to five miles to get to 20 miles. To get from five miles to 20 miles, we have to times five by four. Five times four is 20. So, from 8 kilometres to 30 kilometres, if we times it by 4, what number do we get? Mm-hmm, we get 32. We don't get 30. So, Ahmed is incorrect. Another way of solving that is to have done it the inverse. 20 divided by 5 equals 4. And then using that inverse to then help us with 8 4 times 8, which again, we still get the same answer, 32 kilometres. Don't worry too much about that one because we will be going over converting from miles, converting miles into kilometres and back again later on in the week. So not to worry too much. So some key vocabulary today. Volume. You would have been introduced this word in about year two. So the volume is the amount of space that a substance or object occupies, or that is enclosed within a container. So if you've got a water bottle to hand, grab it. Grab your water bottle. The water is the volume. The amount of water in the bottle is the volume, because that's the amount of space that is currently being occupied within a container. The capacity is the amount that your water bottle could hold. So your water bottle might be full. So the volume and capacity might well be equal. But if it's not, then that means that your water bottle could fit more. So the capacity is the maximum amount that something can contain. So if you think about that in terms of our classrooms, our classroom could probably fit, well, we know it can because we've done it before, could probably fit about 80 children in. But on an average day, we only have a volume of about 30 children in, but it has the capacity to fit about 80 children in. Okay, so the capacity is how much it can contain, the volume is how much it does contain. 
Metric units, capacity and volume. Now, quick spelling check, spell check. I noticed lots of the work that you sent in. Lots of you noticed uh, how metre should be spelt. Lots of you spelt that correctly. I saw even um, one lovely girl in my class, I could see where she'd made the mistake and then she corrected it and then she remembered from there onwards. So that was really good to see that you paid attention. But what about litre? How would we spell litre? Is it L-I-T-E-R or L-I-T-R-E? If you said it's L-I-T-R-E, then you are correct. Litre is spelt in this way. So make sure you get that right and you're conscious of it as you're completing your work today. So a milliliter is a thousandth of a litre and we know that because we remember from last week that a milli means a thousandth or something. So today we're going to be converting between litres and millilitres and how do we do that? Hmm, what will we need to multiply or divide by? Hmm, what's that magic number from what I just showed you? Yep, the magic number is 1000 today. Multiply by a thousand to get from litres to millilitres. What if you want to get from millilitres to litres? Hmm. That's right. You'll need to divide by a thousand. How many millilitres are there in a litre? There's a thousand millilitres in a litre. And here, we've got a little method shown on screen just to help us, just like we had last week, with when we are converting between litres and millilitres. So we're going to have a go at doing some conversion ourselves. Convert these measurements from litres to millilitres and millilitres to litres. Pause the video here, give yourself some time to do that. Make sure you're wearing both your hats today. So make sure you've got your method hat and your logic hat on. Excellent. Here are the answers. 8 litres is equivalent to 8,000 millilitres. So we could see for 8 litres and if we use the little box shown on screen to help us. To get from 8 litres we need to multiply by 1,000, so that one's quite simple, 8,000 millilitres, and so on and so forth. So converting between litres and millilitres, when we need to convert measurements with three decimal places, sometimes that can be a bit trickier if we're not sure exactly which direction we need to move in when we're multiplying or when we're dividing. So say we had 1 litre, and 457 millilitres, or 1.457 litres. What would that be in millilitres? Well, we'd need to multiply it by a thousand. So our answer would be, that means our numbers are going to move three spaces to the left. Okay, when we're multiplying by a thousand, we're moving three spaces to the left. Our numbers are getting bigger. If you think when we're multiplying, we're going to have more. So if we start moving to the right, our numbers are going to get smaller and that's not logical so we need to make sure we've got on our logic hat so we get 1457 if we are dividing millilitres into and trying to convert it into litres then we need to do 3218 divided by a thousand therefore we know our answer is going to get smaller so we're moving to the right 3.218 as shown on screen so 3.218 litres. Have a go at converting the measurements shown on screen to millilitres and litres. Pause the video here whilst you complete that. Okay, let's go through the answers. So how many of those did you get? Well done if you managed to get them all right. If you didn't, think about where it is that you went wrong. Is it that you didn't move them enough spaces to the right? Because we know when we're multiplying by a thousand, we know that we need to make sure that we're moving it three spaces to the left. If we're dividing by a thousand, we're moving it three spaces to the right. And you can use the zeros in the thousand to help you. There's three zeros, so we're moving three spaces. If we're timesing by a hundred, there's two zeros in a hundred, we're moving two spaces. Okay, so use the, use the number to help you, the zeros in the number to help you as a guide. Converting between litres and millilitres with two decimal places. So, same method again, but just like just like we did with the last one, um, 
we need to look at how far we're moving it. And what you might find a bit trickier with this one is that sometimes you might run out of space and you think, hold on, I need to add another number. So if you look at 2.56 litres, for example, we need to change that into millilitres. We know that we're going to be, because we're timesing by 1,000, we're moving to the left because our number's going to be getting bigger. But then by the time we've moved that across, there's still a gap between the number 6 and the decimal. So therefore, we need to make sure we've got a placeholder. So we put our zero in as our placeholder. It'd be useful here, if you're finding this a bit tricky, to draw out a place value grid. Draw it from thousands, the thousands, the hundreds, the tens and the ones, decimal. Decimal doesn't need a column though. Decimal and then tenths, hundredths, thousandths. And then place your original number in, 2.56 and then multiply it by 1,000. So move each number one at a time, three spaces to the left. So move your two, look, put your finger on your two, move it three spaces to the left, and then write it in just below. Do the same with the five, the six, and then you'll notice there's a gap between the six and the decimal, and that's where your placeholder, your zero, needs to go. 8,320 milliliters converted into liters. Well, we know a liter is a thousand milliliters. So we know if we've got 8,320, then we know we've got at least eight liters there. So our answer would be eight liters and 32 milliliters. Okay, so 8.32 liters. We don't need to put the zero back on. When there's a zero at the end, after a decimal, zeros can be ignored if they're at the end. If they're between two numbers, they're acting as a placeholder, so we can't ignore them. But if the zero falls at the end after a decimal, we can ignore it, we don't need to write it. Now with that in mind, I'd like you to have a go at matching the correct conversion. Pause the video here. Super, let's go through them. So 4.88 litres is equal to 4,880 millilitres and so on and so forth. So if there's one decimal place, so if we're converting 5.2 litres into millilitres, then 5.2 times by 1,000. So again, we're moving, we know if we're times in by 1,000, which direction are we moving in? That's right, we're moving to the left. Our number's getting bigger. So again, if you've got your columns drawn out, use that to help you. Otherwise, move them over. We know that if we've got 5.2 litres, we know we've got at least 5,000 millilitres. 5,000 millilitres, and then we've got our 200, 200 millilitres too. So put them together, 5,200 millilitres. You'll see that I'm using both our hats today. We're using our logic hat, and then we're using our method hat as well. Some of you might choose to use your logic first, and then to check it, using your method hat. Some of you might choose to use your method hat first and then take a step back and use your logic hat. If you're converting from millilitres into litres, 6,700 millilitres, well, we can use, if I was to use my logic hat first, I know that if there's 6,700 millilitres, then there's six litres. Yeah, would you agree? Super. Then I can see that I've got 700 millilitres. So if I've got 6 litres, that's going to go before my decimal, 6.7, 6.7 litres. If I was to use my method hat, then I'd make sure I put my decimal after 6,700 and I would move it three spaces to the right. Three spaces to the right. Again, remember what we said about those zeros after the decimals, we don't really need them if they're at the end of the number. Now, Lara has done her homework. She's been converting between measurements with one decimal place. These are her answers. I want you to now have a go at doing what I do. Mark her work and correct any mistakes. See if you can work out what she was thinking when she managed to get that answer. So for some of you it might be useful not only to tick or cross but also to write down what she's done instead. Has she moved it in the wrong direction? Has she not moved it enough? Decimal places? What is it that she's done? Or has she got them all correct? Pause the video here whilst you work through it.
So, here are the answers. Lara got the first one correct, the second one correct. The third one, she didn't quite get right. She put 34 litres. What did she do wrong? What did she do wrong? Did you manage to work it out? Well, it looks like Lara has divided by 100. Whereas it looks like she should have divided by 1,000. So that's where she went wrong. She didn't divide by enough. She got the fourth one right. The fifth one she didn't quite get right. She put 7,000 millilitres. What did she do wrong? Good. She moved hers four spaces. So she multiplied hers by 10,000 instead of 1,000. And she got the last one correct. Well done if you managed to correct all of her mistakes and explain where she went wrong. So as quickly as you can, convert these measurements. Go. Pause the video. And here are our answers. We've got 4,588 millilitres and rather than me reading them all out off the screen, I'll let you pause the video here and check your answers. So volume problems. Three children have a container, each containing a different amount of water. My container has 3.5 litres in it, says Freddie. My container has 5,355 millilitres in it, says just now. Well, my container has a greater volume than Freddie's, but smaller than just now, says Athena. Write two different possible measurements of the volume of Athena's container. Write one measurement using millilitres and the other in litres, using decimals. So one in millilitres, typo there, and the other in litres. Now to start this, we need to compare what Freddie and Justin have. But in order to compare them, we first will have to make sure we're comparing them using the same unit of measure, surely. One is measuring in litres, the other is measuring in millilitres. That makes no sense. So we need to make sure we convert Freddie's from litres into millilitres or convert justness from millilitres into litres. Once we've done that, we can then look at the range that we're working with. So how many of you managed to convert Freddie's correctly? Freddie's in, mil in millilitres would be 3,500. 3,500 millilitres. And justness would be 5.5. 355 litres. So now if we're comparing them or if we're trying to look at where the amount that Athena could have, we need to think of a number within that range. Okay, so a number within either 3.5 to 5.355 or within 3,500 and 5,355. You need to think of a number between those two. And then you need to write that answer in millilitres but then you also need to write that number or a different number in litres. So Athena's, num Athena's container could contain any volume of liquid between 3,501, because 3,500 is her amount, so we need to go the one above, and 5,354, so one less than 5,355. So you could have had 3.6 litres or you could have had 5,000 millilitres. Glasses of lemonade have 200 millilitres in them. A jug of lemonade has 1.5 litres. If I had two jugs of lemonade, how many glasses of lemonade would have the same amount? What conversion will you do to work out the answer? So if you think about it, a jug of lemonade holds 1.5 litres. If you've got two jugs of lemonade, how much lemonade do you have? Excellent, you have three litres. Now what would three litres be? in millilitres. Excellent. It would be 3,000 millilitres. So what do you need to do now? Good. 3,000 divide it by 200 millilitres. And we get 15. Mmm, yummy. 
Spot the errors. There are some errors on this slide. Can you spot them? Pause the video here and see if you can find what find the errors shown. Now let's go through the answers. These were the errors. Oh dear. We didn't always have, seem to have the correct symbol shown. Now, true or false, explain your answer. The full volumes shown are correctly ordered from smallest to greatest. Do you agree? Pause the video here. No, they are definitely not ordered correctly. Here's the correct order. It should be 3.45 litres in the aquarium. So if we change them all into the same unit of measure, it makes it a lot easier. There's 3.45 litres in the aquarium. Then it's the bottle with 3.5 litres. Then it's the bu bucket, which has 3.55 litres. And then finally, the cylinder with 3.6 litres. So, now we've managed to get through all of that, oh, phew, I'd like you to now have a look at the email which was sent to you this morning. On it, you'll find your worksheet for today. Now, you can choose your level of difficulty. You don't need to complete all three. OK, choose your level of difficulty. If you're doing one and you're thinking, oh, this is a bit easy, then maybe have a look at the other one. If you don't have a printer at home, don't worry. You can just have a look at it and then write it down into your books. OK, so you can just write it into your books neatly. Now, we're going to move on because we had some amazing, amazing work sent in last week. It was so, so good. We were so impressed and so proud of you. And lots of you would have received your certificates in the post already. OK, so well done to all of you who sent in your work, emailed your work, and now I'm just going to have a go and show you some of the amazing work which we were sent because we're so, so proud. Well done to all of you who have been sending your work in. Keep it up. We are so proud of you. And don't forget, you can email us your work. You need to email us your work at yr6 at grange.harrow.sch.uk. Have a great day. Bye.